In this video, I'm going to continue to show you the evidence to demonstrate that man is not one species, but instead man is three species. The evidence that I will show you is truly groundbreaking and it provides insight into the behaviors of human beings that have never been observed before. As we saw in part one, the view that man is three species is a very unique view. So unique that I've been unable to find any articles, journals or information of any kind that supports my view. In fact, quite the opposite. A search on the internet typically results in spectacular dismissal. However, in part one we established that the evidence to support the current scientific viewpoint that man is one species is, without question, very poor. Scientists have failed to detect the moment of evolution in any species, let alone in humans. Similarly, there is considerable fragmentation in science with regard to the objective of defining human beings. In other words, there are a multitude of different scientific pursuits, for example, anthropology, paleontology and genetics, and still we remain in the dark. It is as though science is merely delving into the dark, unfathomable, bottomless pit in a vain attempt to detract from its failure. More importantly, what this does expose is that science lacks vision. Hence, can we now look at this from another angle and begin to unravel a new perspective that will finally help shape our understanding of who are we? You may ask why this is important for humankind. And the answer to this is that the implications are huge. All three species are distinctly different in their diet, their medicinal needs, their education and learning, their reasoning, their behavior, their sexual preferences, their crimes, and so on. So for example, whilst one species may depend on an omnivorous diet, that is plants and animals, another may require solely a fruit-based diet. If the wrong diet is advised, then the consequences are considerable. Hence, this is redefining for man. A one fit for all approach to humans in all aspects of our social sphere is inadequate and verging on derisory. I am Mr. Cup. My name is Gregory Hayward. This is a very important name. Right now, we must continue to reset the human compass. To continue to advance in the definition of humans, we must answer the question, who are we? Whilst the majority of our ancestors are extinct, some are not, and human genetics has proven that the gap between us and some of our living relatives is comparatively close. Chimpanzees share more than 97% of our DNA. Gorillas share more than 96% of our DNA. Orangutans share more than 95% of our DNA. Therefore, evidence of our great superfamily still lives on today. The scientists have predominantly focused upon the evolutionary process of 21st century man being derived from the great apes over the last 18 million years. In doing this, they are trying to establish the characteristics of humans that separate us from the great apes. Naturally, this endeavour is focused upon the small percentage of our DNA that varies from our ape ancestors. For example, the difference between a chimpanzee and a modern human is about 1.4%. Therefore, what constitutes the DNA structure of this variance? The problem with this argument is that, whilst we remain focused upon these small percentage variations, a much bigger and broader question comes into play. Why? The 98.6% is a much bigger number than the 1.4% and hence why are we not looking at the much bigger picture? That is the 98%. We assume by simple observation that apes do not communicate at our level. Similarly we believe that they do not express consciousness to the extent that we do. That is self-awareness, cognitive delivery, art and so forth. 
and they may not be as political as we are. For example, complex interrelationships. But what do apes do that we do? Apes, like humans, display fairly basic activity and hence it is easy to observe fundamental elements that illustrate the common denominators of their behaviour. Several factors are relevant from observation. Apes breed. Apes fight for their survival. Apes have territories. The great apes are a robust primate. Most apes kill. Apes have kings and alphas. The orangutan exhibits a greater degree of individualism and solitude than the other species. The gorilla is characteristically and primarily observed as a highly sensitive ape. Apes have hierarchies. Apes are political. The chimpanzee is a gregarious breed. Apes cajole to sexually reproduce, including rape. Much of this observation is gleaned from the field work of zoologists and essentially this list of ape behaviour can correlate with human behaviour. We have kings, hierarchies, territories, political disposition, survival motivation and we breed. Emotionally we exhibit individualism, solitude and sensitivity and whether we like it or not humans kill, sexually cajole and rape. Of further significance, this list of characteristics of ape behaviour can be broken down further because certain observations are more overt than others. In other words, certain behaviours are highly visible and others are less so. Hence, common visibly recognised behaviour includes all apes kill, apes have kings and alphas, apes have hierarchies, apes are political, apes breed, apes fight for their survival. Apes have territories. Alongside these, there are more specific behaviours that are more obscure. The great apes are a robust primate. The orangutan is a more individual animal. The gorilla is a highly sensitive ape. The chimpanzee is a gregarious breed. My interest here is with the latter list of specific and more obscure features of the great apes because whilst I find considerable evidence of the common features being evident in man, and overtly so, this case is less so with the features identified on the second list. Certainly, the following inference has been given significantly less exposure in the human social sphere. Human trait formation, robust, individual, sensitive, gregarious. The apes have undergone significant zoological observation in recent years and a picture is emerging of their essential characteristics. Of particular interest here is a brief synopsis of the four great apes. These are seen to be the great ancestors of humans. The four great apes are the orangutan, gorilla, the common chimpanzee and the bonobo chimpanzee. In 1971, Dr. Brute Mary Galdikas arrived in one of the world's last wild places, Tanjung Puting Reserve in Indonesian Borneo. There were no telephones, roads, electricity, television or any modern day services. It made sense to her that she would find orangutans here, even though her professors told her that she would not be able to study orangutans in the wild. They were too elusive and wary living almost entirely in deep swamps. Dr. Caldicus did find her orangutans here, and she spent many years observing the habitats and behaviours of these semi-solitary, boisterous, powerful and strong apes. Liz Pearson is the director of a pioneering gorilla reintroduction project on the Gabon border with Congo, West Africa. Situated in the reserve are 23 gentle gorillas and establishing an attachment is crucial. Liz states that gorillas are very sensitive. If you do not develop a bond, they do not eat. The lights go out in their eyes. The common chimpanzee and the bonobo are only slightly different in appearance but in sexual and social behaviour there are marked differences. The common chimpanzee has an omnivorous diet, a troop hunting culture based on beta males led by an alpha male, large communities and highly complex social relationships. 
The Bonobo, on the other hand, has a mostly frugivorous diet and an egalitarian, non-violent, matriarchal, sexually receptive behaviour. The paper that is available in the link below this video provides a more extensive summary of the zoological observations of ape behaviour. These behaviours are collated and summarised in the following table, which provides a summary of eight behaviours that relate to trait characteristics. The table shows that each of the different breeds of ape have behaviours that predominantly fall into two of four categories, that is, traits. These traits are identified as being individual, robust, gregarious, which means social, and sensitive. Additionally, each species shows different trait combinations to the other species. For example, the orangutan is a more solitary animal than the other apes, and it demonstrates a strong, powerful disposition. Hence, the orangutan has the trait combination of individual plus robust. The chimpanzee is significantly more sociable in its behaviour, while remaining to be a robust ape. Hence its trait combination is different and it can be summarised as robust plus gregarious. Thus each different breed of ape is showing different trait combinations. Also, if we revisit the dominant trait behaviour that was outlined earlier, we can see that the table above correlates with this. Hence, the great apes demonstrate they are a robust primer. The orangutans are a more independent and hence individual animal. The gorilla is a highly sensitive ape. The chimpanzee is a gregarious breed. Therefore, the apes are demonstrating that in each different type, that is species, there are different traits. Now, what can we learn from this that can be carried to humans? The argument for the existence of types and traits in humans is not new. In fact, it has existed for centuries and as far back as the philosophers of ancient Greece. However, human endeavour has always failed to identify what these traits are. In the next video, part three of the series, Man is Three Species, we will discover if the traits that have been observed in the apes can also be shown to exist in humans. And if these traits do exist, do they fall into different combinations? If this is the case, we may have finally resolved the centuries-old endeavour and we will be moving ever closer to determining who are we. More so, if the apes are a multi-species animal, does this also apply to humans? The only language I speak is the truth. There is much to say. Keep watching Mr Cup.